Okay. Uh, hey, my name is Jonas, and uh, this is the first of hopefully many uh, little presentations that I want to do for my friends who do um, either recording or live sound, uh, something where they need some information about how this stuff works. Uh, a lot of the manuals and books and materials that you read on this thing can be really confusing, so I want to try to give it in a really, like, easy to understand and really useful manner. So uh, it's a series called Sound Advice. And this is the first one, and this is sort of, um, this is going to be a precursor to a lot of the other stuff, and this is called Introduction to Microphones. So, first off, what is a microphone? Um, a microphone is a type of a transducer, and what a transducer is, it's a really fancy way of saying it's an object that changes energy from one form to another. So, here's our microphone, uh, our old handy uh, SM58. Right, vocal mic, and there's a person singing. So, when a person sings, it causes fluctuations in airwaves, uh, what we call acoustic energy. That acoustic energy then travels into the microphone, and the microphone now converts it into electrical energy. Um, but unlike the real steady waves of electrical energy that will cause this light bulb to turn on. Uh, a human's voice is going to fluctuate with different um, different variables, which are going to cause different frequencies. So, it doesn't provide a um, it doesn't provide a a static charge. It's a dynamic charge. Uh, when we look at it, it uh, gives us this thing called a waveform. And so this is what it looks like. So there'd be a lot of different variables. If our light bulb was being powered with this, it would fluctuate with being on and off. Uh, for a light bulb, no good. For guys who do music, it's great. So, here's our friend the microphone, and microphones have certain characteristics. The one that's sort of important for our introduction is the polar pattern. And what the polar pattern is, is the way that the microphone picks up sound around it. So, um, this microphone is a vocal mic. It has what's called a cardioid pattern. Uh, cardioid sounds like heart, and that's the reason why, is because cardioid is a heart-shaped pattern. You can see it here. Um, and what it is, it's going to pick up things that are mostly aimed at the front of it, but also a little bit from the back and sides, and virtually nothing from, uh, from directly behind it. Uh, this microphone is also called unidirectional, meaning it picks up sound the best when it's coming from one direction only. However, so there's our diaphragm. That's the part of the microphone that picks up the sound and actually converts it into electrical energy. When a person sings it's going to sound a little bit different when they're far off versus when they get in closer. So, <clears throat> so there's never going to be a time when it's truly unidirectional. It's always going to pick up a little bit of the stuff that's going around, on around it. But generally, it's just going to be one source uh, and one location that it's going to. So you also kind of want to think about, because it's unidirectional, how close do you want to be to the source material? So for a voice, it might be a little bit different versus a guitar uh, because of the way that the sound projects from it, or a drum because of the way that the sound projects off of it. So doing a little bit of uh, fooling around with microphone placement will tell you the character of the microphone that you're using and where you're going to get the best sound uh, from, from the object that you're miking. Yeah. So... Your final product, the, the thing that you have recorded, is only ever as good as the source that you are recording. So if you've got a, a lousy sounding drum or guitar, even if you have a really great mic, it's only going to be a very accurate reproduction of a lousy sounding drum or guitar. So your source is defined by two things, what makes the sound and what captures the sound. Uh, there's a lot of different microphones that are out there and each one has a different job. So uh, our friend, the SM57, is designed to be more of an instrument microphone versus the SM58, which is designed primarily for vocals. There's also microphones that are really specific to a, a um, one instrument. So like this is a kick drum mic versus something like this, which is not specific to an instrument. It has a lot of different uses, but it tends to do the same types of jobs. So a small diaphragm condenser mic is going to be something that's good for far away miking, 
uh, or if it's up close, it's going to be something that has uh, really light acoustic energy or something that is uh, doesn't make a ton of direct sound. So like hi-hats, acoustic guitar, choir mics, those are things that you'll use a small diaphragm condenser for more often than not. So here we have a nail. And the reason that I wanted to bring this analogy up is because there's a couple of ways that you can get this nail uh, to do its job. You can use a hammer, which is sort of the, the right idea, or you can use the back end of a screwdriver. So obviously the, the analogy that I'm drawing here is that if we have a job to complete, we always want to try to use the right tool for the job. So if we've got something like a Marshall stack that we need to reproduce uh, either through recording it or uh, amplifying it using live sound we want to try to use something like maybe an SM57 uh, another really good choice is the Sennheiser MD421 uh, or if you've got a couple of bucks and you're wanting to record it as accurately as possible some of the mics that you'll use is like a Royer uh, 121 or like a Neumann U87 if you've really you know if, if it's all about accuracy and character and making sure that the best sound either goes to tape or is reproduced through your speakers. But um, yeah, just all of that to say that you always want to try to use the right tool for the job. So microphone manufacturers spend a lot of time developing the microphones that they market to you. And the reason that they do that is because they're actually trying to help you make a microphone that performs a certain function really well. So this these would be great examples of that. This is not to say that you can never use uh, like an SM57, which is primarily a vocal mic, in front of a Marshall stack. It's just, it's not the right tool for the job. It might sound okay. It might get the job done. But in a perfect world, you always want to have the right, the right tool for the job. So here's your microphone. And there are some things that you need to know uh, about where this microphone is going. The first of which is the room that it's going to be working in, but also the characteristics of the microphone itself and the characteristics of the sound or the source material that you're going to be, um, that you're going to be miking up. So sort of important, the room I wanted to bring up primarily because the room is going to affect your sound, your source material, and it's going to affect the microphone, uh, just because if you're in a small room, the microphone's going to pick up a lot of the stuff bouncing around. If you can be in a big room, not so much. So with the mic, you'll want to understand the frequency response of the mic, meaning how well does it pick up highs, how well does it pick up lows. Uh, you'll also want to know what kind of polar patterns it has. We had touched real briefly on the cardioid polar pattern, which is real common in what's called a unidirectional mic, a mic that picks up from just one place. The polar patterns can also affect the sound that eventually goes to tape or is reproduced using your live sound stuff. And also you'll want to know whether the microphone that you have is a dynamic mic or a condenser mic. A dynamic mic is reactive, meaning it only changes when something hits it, like uh, when air hits it versus a condenser which is actually always moving around and a much more sensitive microphone, but maybe not one that you'd use in something uh, in, in certain situations. You also want to know the sound characteristics. Uh, so the SPL of the source. SPL stands for sound pressure level. Uh, if you're miking up something that is going to be super loud, like the Marshall stack in the last example, you'd probably use a different mic than if you were miking a, you know, a flute or an acoustic guitar or something like that. Um, you also want to kind of understand proximity effect. Uh, what that means is a microphone behaves differently when it's closer or farther away from the source material. So a SM57 like this, dead on on a, uh, on a Marshall cab, is going to behave differently than if it's about three feet off. And then you also want to take into consideration other nearby sources, uh, both for live and recording. Um, you're going to want to know if it's a vocal mic, you'll want to use a certain type of microphone if you have a bunch of singers that are all close proximity to each other, or if the person singing is going to be singing next to a open drum set or that Marshall stack that we were looking at. Um, yeah, just knowing about your other nearby sources is really going to help you pick out the right tool for the job. 
So next time we get together, uh, we're going to get a little bit more into the how and why, uh, how you pick out your microphones and why you would do it. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about understanding waveforms. Uh, we looked at them real briefly, um, but we're actually going to get into why they look the way that they look and how that can help us choose a microphone uh, that will be right for the job. Uh, we're actually going to talk more in depth about what makes a condenser microphone versus a dynamic microphone and when you will use them and just a couple of tips on mic placement. So that was the first lesson. Uh, thanks so much for uh, listening to me talk for about five or six minutes here. Uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks. Bye-bye.